Jessica Simpson was one of the leading ladies of the 90s teen pop movement. She was grouped with a few other similar blondes, Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears. All three women are commonly cited as some of the most visible stars of the 90s teen pop era. Unlike Britney and Christina, Jessica struggled to make a big splash in the music industry. She was in a constant grapple with her artistic identity, and it was largely due to her label. Jessica started young doing talent shows, and in due course, a family friend recommended that she try out for Disney's Mickey Mouse Club. The people at Disney loved her and remarked how she looked like a young Cindy Crawford. She was sent to Disney's entertainment camp, but she needed to work on her acting. She eventually met the rest of the child stars, including Justin Timberlake, Christina Aguilera, Britney Spears, and Ryan Gosling, who she had a little crush on at the time. As far as the girls, she instantly recognized her and Britney's similarities in the way they look and their upbringing. She was extremely excited to meet kids who were like her, and the professionals told her she had a very high chance of making the show. The final audition came, and she didn't do well. Christina Aguilera went on the stage before her, and she got extremely nervous after seeing how well Christina did. Her singing was good, but she forgot her monologue and wasn't the best dancer. After Jessica, Britney Spears went on stage and did amazingly well. At that point, Simpson knew that she wouldn't make the cut. However, her mom, and even Jessica herself, grew to feel optimistic that she would cross paths with those girls again. But that didn't take away the initial sting. She cried continuously, it was quite sad for a long time because she felt like she had blown her big opportunity. She began to train her voice and found out that she had a four and a half octave range. Simpson was signed to a Christian label, which resulted in a shelved album in a folded company. After a while, she decided to start trying to pursue her career again seriously and had a goal to go mainstream. She landed eight meetings with different labels. When she sang I Will Always Love You for Jive Records, they turned her down because they had signed a girl too similar to her and that girl even sang that same song. That girl turned out to be Britney Spears. When she auditioned for RCA Records, they said the same exact thing, except this time around, that girl was Christina Aguilera. So it was pretty clear early on where Jessica Simpson would fit within the music industry. After those few rejections, she auditioned for Sony Records. Sony officials were so enthusiastic about her and her voice that they were tempted to sign her right then and there. She landed the deal, and immediately after being signed in 1997 at the age of 17, she was told she had to lose 15 pounds by Tommy Mottola, the head of the label, and she went on a strict diet. She didn't really understand why she had to lose weight, but she was determined to achieve her goals, so she did it. Which doesn't make it right by any means, but she wanted to get her song on the radio and make her family proud. Jessica worked tirelessly on her debut album, but it experienced many delays. After Britney released Baby One More Time, the label decided Jessica's album wasn't good enough and that she needed to incorporate more Britney-esque songs. Jessica is quoted saying, My job had gotten a lot harder. I had been signed for my voice, but I had to now contort myself into this mold of a dancer. She truly just wanted to sing and didn't care about dancing, but the label pressured her into doing so. The promo for her debut album began, and the label thought that since Britney and Christina went with up-tempo dance songs, they would go with the ballad to make her stand out. I Wanna Love You Forever was her official debut on the scene, and went on to speak at number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100. She went on a rigorous schedule of promotion, but there was still a lot of focus by her label on how she looked. Tommy Mottola told her that she needed to have Janet Jackson abs, and the label hired her a trainer. Jessica was shy about her body and wasn't comfortable with showing so much skin. She was working out endlessly, but still wasn't getting abs which resulted in her drawing them on with an eyeshadow pencil. Columbia had really high expectations for her debut album, because of the success of her debut single, but the album titled Sweet Kisses debuted with 65,000 copies sold first week. It would eventually sell over 2 million copies in the states alone. The album featured two other moderate hits, I Think I'm In Love With You and Where You Are. For her next album, Tommy Mottola wanted Jessica Simpson to be a hybrid of Britney Spears and Mariah Carey and take on the genre of dance pop instead of balladry. For this album cycle, she was also told that she needed to get skinnier per the label's request and went on another extreme diet. Jessica felt discouraged because she hadn't got to show her real self through her work yet. She had just been the artist her label told her to be. And that artist was in the shadows of Britney Spears and whoever else her label told her to mimic. Her sophomore album Irresistible debuted with 120,000 copies sold first week and was a step to rebrand herself to keep up with her peers. 
Jessica also feels like her label tried to sell her as someone who was obsessed with sex for this album. But at that point, it was still public knowledge in the press that Jessica was still a virgin. So it didn't make sense to Jessica why they tried to market her that way. Nonetheless, the first week's sales for Irresistible were almost double the sales for her first album. With her third album, she was determined to show the world who Jessica Simpson was, and was way more creatively involved than her previous efforts. She barely had a budget for the album because Tommy Mottola had spent most of it on her last album. She even had a diss aimed at Tommy on the album's title track, In This Skin. I know my talent is real, so don't tell me. Don't tell me. I have to be 102, I don't have nothing to prove, she says. In This Skin was released at the same time as her iconic reality TV show, The Newlyweds, which helped propel the album. Her single With You became a hit, and her first number one on the Billboard's pop chart, and a huge success on TRL. The album experienced a 200% increase in sales after the reality show picked up steam. Jessica was very proud of this album, because it was no more Britney Bott or Mariah clone Carrie, she just got to be herself, which resulted in In This Skin selling over 3 million copies in the States alone. For her fourth album, she ended her relationship with Sony Records and made the move to Epic Records. Her follow-up to In This Skin titled A Public Affair was released closely after her divorce with Nick Lachey. She was excited she could make the music she wanted and didn't have to depend on the label because her clothing brand had become quite a big deal. Jessica would continue to release music and albums throughout the years, but eventually decided to remove herself from the music industry. The Jessica Simpson collection became the top-selling celebrity fashion line and first to earn $1 billion in annual sales, so it was clear she definitely could be free to do whatever she wants. She wanted to focus on being a mom and having a sense of normalcy. Jessica Simpson had no creative input at the beginning of her career, and her label pushing her to be more like other artists instead of herself ultimately hurt her music career. After all, she was seen as a product of Britney Spears, Mariah Carey, or whoever else her label was forcing her to model herself after. Which is a shame because she has an amazing voice. In the end, she was able to break away from the terrible control of her label, and show more of who she is as an artist, and she didn't have to be pressured into doing things she was uncomfortable with when she achieved that freedom. She later decided to give the industry up altogether, because she didn't need or want it anymore. Nonetheless, her relatively brief stint in the music industry as a mainstream teen idol is still quite notable, whether it's for its cheesiness, reality TV show, being a copycat, finding her voice again, or just having some downright catchy songs. Jessica Simpson persevered and moved on to bigger and better things.